Yeah, here we had 3.9999. Nein, 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 nein! Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Sometimes I'm hitting the board right here. That's, that's so weird. This is going to be a real shorty, but we need this for the evaluation of some integrals. So yeah, here we go. I, we are going to express the floor function in the positive real numbers today using the unit step function. I have introduced the unit step function before when dealing with Laplace transforms. It has been such a long time ago where I did this, but yeah. Um, Bear with me for a second. At first we're going to take a look at the floor function. So the floor function is denoted like this right here. It's the floor of x and it tells you how to round down to the nearest integer. Meaning if we have the floor of 3.9999999999 nine, 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 nine. this is where my German roots come through. It's nothing but well free. Okay that's the floor rounding down to the nearest integer. If you have the floor of negative 2, it really depends on your source, uh, negative 2.5, let's put it that way. Rounding down to the nearest integer would be negative 2 or negative 3. It, it, it really depends on your source, but that's not part of this video. We are only acting in the positive reals. Also, if you have the floor of 4, for example, it's going to give you just this thing in here in itself. So that's the flow function. If you want to put this in the graph for the positive reals, it looks like this right here. So we have from 0 to 1 this part, then we have a jump right here and then it's going to start at 1 once again right here, one unit to this side and so on, okay? This is what the flow function actually looks like. And we want to express this bad boy today using the unit step function. I'm going to denote it like this u of x, that's the unit step function, and it's a piecewise continuous function, and it's, um, uh, it looks like this. So we have zero whenever our x is strictly less than zero, so when our x is in the negatives, we have zero as our u of x value, and one if our x is uh, greater or equal to zero. Meaning, if we take a look at the graph, it looks something like this. So we are at zero all the time coming from infinity here. Then we have a jump and here at one it goes on in a straight line. Okay, this is our unit step function. I have introduced it when dealing with Laplace transforms. So far for the basics, how can we make use of this fact right here? That, that we can express this floor function kind of using those uh, constants right here, depending on your area right here that you're acting in. Well, here comes a little bit of trickery in. I have kind of done this when dealing with this 2 equals 1 proof using derivatives, link in the description. So if we have the floor of x, well it might seem quite trivial, but that's nothing but the sum running from k equals to 1 to the floor of x. Okay, that's quite weird. So we are de defining the floor of x by using the floor of x up here in the sum, but it does make perfect sense be because that's an empty sum. You can interpret it as k to the zero of power. Okay, and then you're getting one plus one plus dot 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 plus one, but this floor of x times, okay? So it does make sense. This right here is quite a nice definition for this whole thing. But what is k to the zero of power? Well, the empty sum can be re rewritten instead using a one. Okay, and this is good. And this is pretty good. Because if we do a little change of index right here in our u of x, for example saying that we have u of x minus k in this case, we're going to end up with, okay, zero whenever x minus k is less than zero, meaning that's equivalent to saying x is strictly less than k, and we have one whenever well, our x is greater or equal to k. Okay, I hope this does make sense. This is just uh, rewriting this definition right here. Okay, pretty simple stuff actually. And now, what? 
does this bring us? So, so how can we make use of this little fact right here that we have shifted the index in here basically? Well, this is a one right here. And whenever our x is strictly greater than k, okay, whenever our x is strictly greater than k or equal to k, we can actually get a one in here because by, by this definition we have a one. Meaning whenever our k is less than x, or equal, it does work out quite nicely. And it does make sense because you see our floor of x that we have right here is well less or equal to our x itself. So that's a little nice observation that you can take if you have the floor of n or x whatsoever. This is less or equal to our n. Okay, I hope you agree with me that this is true. So here we had um, yeah, here we had 3.9999 as our n, and our n was indeed greater or equal to our floor that we have right here, 3. Here, n was our 4, and well, we got 4 on the other side out. Meaning, if we have this sum running from k equals to 1 to the floor of x, all those k's in between up until the floor of x, this also counts, are, well, strictly less or equal to our x value that we would have otherwise. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Meaning our flow of x is nothing but the sum running from k equals to 1 to the flow of x of u and yeah, x minus k, just what we introduced. And you can just um, put a number in, for example, 3.5 or something. Then you have 3.5 right here, okay, as your x value. And then you have 3.5 minus 1, okay, this is fine, this is going to give us 1 and so on, up until we reach the point 4, when k is equal to 4, if we would go on with the sum. So what we can do, we can actually add infinitely many zeros to this whole thing right here, okay? I just want to turn this into a series, basically. A superposition unit step functions right here. But what is a zero exactly? Well, by this definition, our zero is our unit step function whenever k is strictly greater than our x. Meaning, if k is strictly greater than our x or n, it also means that it is greater than our floor of n or equal to the thing. Okay? Meaning, this is, for example, u of x minus um, floor of x plus 1. Okay? You see? Uh, minus 1 in this case. Floor of x minus 1. If we plug this into here, k being equal to floor of x plus 1. Okay? And so on. We can go on with this. And we can turn this into a series running from 1 to infinity of u of x minus k. I hope this did make perfect sense to you guys. It's quite a weird input right here. It's quite a weird representation of our flow function, but it does work out for the positive reals. And this right here is really quite useful. If you want to evaluate flow functions in itself, really easy stuff, then you might want to make use of this definition right here. And if you evaluate those integral boys, well, then you can just break up the integral into two integrals using the fundamental theorem of calculus and you can notice that in a certain range our u of x minus k in this case is going to be zero and thus the integral. And with this technique it becomes pretty clear why some of those flow integrals or most of them are actually going to run from for example n to infinity in the end. It's just a neat little thing in the next video or something you are going to see an application of this very boy right here. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those t-shirts I created. This is sadly not one of them, but I absolutely adore this t-shirt. I can't emphasize enough how much I love this boy right here. And you can support channel on Patreon. And well, up until the next video, have a flammable day, my boys. See ya.